And at that time, I was 22 years old, and my parents were funding my, my lawsuit, and I just said, you know what, enough. I've gone through enough right now. I don't want to divulge this to my parents. I don't want to divulge this to the world. I want to move on with my life. And I decided to include it because these are things that I kept from my parents, but these are things that I couldn't handle more at, at 22 years old. And these, these are things that make you a survivor. How did that experience influence the way you guys grew up? Well, I have four beautiful children, uh, and I think it made me hyper aware. Uh, in terms of um, what my past has been and what their past and, and, and their present future is. So um, it makes you, it gives you that little extra protection that also mothers do. Well, speaking of moms, I want to bring up your beautiful mama. Uh, Come on up here, mama. Uh, you can see Lady Gaga. My, my kids call her Gaga because, yeah, they couldn't say Grandma, so she's been Gaga for 25 years now. So you're the OG, the OG Lady Gaga. The OG Lady Gaga right here. Much better dresser. And you're the <laughs> <best. laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mama. Very good. Well, such an adorable mom. Really, I see the, uh, she gets a good look right here, Pop. How was your relationship with Mom growing up as, as opposed to now? You want to say that? <laughs> Well, uh, back in the day, growing up, I was five feet ten. Now, you can see the size I am. So we're now we're in like adult relationship, which is much better, but I'm still the mother. Oh yeah. Still the mother. See, I thought you meant she beat you down to the size. No. <laughs> All the stress is made her oh, oh, right. <laughs> now, what did you think about when you, when you read of the, the molestation? I was stunned. I was very disappointed that it happened. I'm not sure I want to know who the people were that were responsible for it because they would probably not have acted in a very really like way. Well. As I should have. How was Vanessa as a little girl? She was cute. She was adorable. <laughs> yes, she was. She had very good days and she had very challenging days. <laughs> she was a hyper kid? No, not hyper. Oh, okay. Very good notice. Very adventurous thing. Um, and I was spirited. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> spirited. Did you spank her? No. 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 I don't. I've never. No. No. We got. We didn't spank her. I, I wish you would talk to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> they did other things. You did other things. Right. Okay. The, the famous story about the. Uh, oh, the. Um, she used to come in the house all the time when she was. Teenagers are typical adolescents. Slam the door, go to like her. We didn't see them for hours or days or whatever. So finally, one day, her dad said, you know, don't slam the door again. And she did. So he took the door off and then she did. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Don't just sell. I got a little girl. Okay. She had a lot of boyfriends growing up? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, that was like a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, whoa, a lot. Yeah, yeah. She, well, she had lots of male friends, but she had a few very special. I bet they were all campaigning for the boys. I don't know about campaigning. <laughs> yeah, I had a few loves in my life, and, okay. uh, but I was very rebellious. Any so personal you, favorites of yours? She doesn't have one that's to come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has no favorites of anybody. He's out there. Oh, he's out. Okay, okay. See, my, I had to get mine. Whoever I was dating had to pass them off. Because if mom didn't approve, then there was no need to move forward. So it was very important. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to move on. So you got to move on. Yeah, it's, it's still a pleasure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, thank mom. You. I really appreciate you coming out. <laughs> Thank you. Do I turn this? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Before we go, I, I, I ask a little bit about the age. Okay, sure. So uh, a few more episodes. We're after the Desperate Housewives, and, and, and we all saw you in that uh, picture of you know. I know. They blew it. They blew it. So like, I don't think there's too much secrecy in that. No, I know. But, uh, it was uh, very difficult. 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 And an iconic show, and I was so happy to be a part of it. And uh, on our last, um, our last night, uh, Mark Carey, we were we finished it in Lynette's kitchen, which we all sat in that that circle table and had coffee uh, in, in a lot of our episodes. And uh, Mark Carey just said, you know, when he started out, he was unemployed, had no idea what he was going to do, and this script changed his life, and he was bankrolled for all. And he's a huge Stephen Sondheim show, and we met. Me and Mark, I was on Broadway doing a Sondheim on Sondheim show, and I sang um, uh, a song for him, and uh, it's 
pets and clowns, and it was a, not a dry high in the house. Uh, so that was my thank you to him. Uh, well, did, did you ever feel at one point when you were doing a show that uh, you might get killed off? Because on those types of shows, <laughs> yeah, you know, they were going to end yeah. it with a certain bang right there? Yeah, yeah, no, Renee was too tough. She wasn't going to take a bullet. Did you get a bang? She was going to hit the set. Exactly. Uh, keep going. <laughs> exactly. What, now, what clues can you share with us? About the finale. What can we look for? Like the finale will definitely be a tear trickle. You will not be able to, to get through the show without a tear. Okay. But it's very funny too. Uh, and uh, my storyline is, is pretty humorous and I was happy to, to be a part of it. Uh, Renee does have a wedding dress. Uh, I can't tell you whether she makes it down the aisle or not, but uh, it gets a little rainy. I saw that. So, uh, I saw a picture of you and uh, Eva there looking like you're escaping go. from prison. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who did you come to prison for? Oh, that's hard to say because I they kind of peppered me with everybody. Um, most of my scenes were with Felicity because we were college friends in the show. Uh, but uh, I mean, I just finished working with Eva. I just uh, I love working with Marsha. Terry, I've had probably the least amount of work just because of the story on that we cross. But um, they're all fantastic and they're great women. They're all completely different than yeah. what they play. Which is nice. Yeah. Warm is here. Is she? She's paying. She wanted to get a. Uh, a picture with you. Why didn't Eva just hook you up? I said, I'll take care of you. I'll see you at the rap party. Yes, yeah, right. see you at the rap party. Exactly. She, she, she eats most of that show. Yes, yeah. And I just got her perfume yesterday. She gave me a bottle of her. She's a mini model. Yes, she I mean, she's fine. She's about that big, but she moves the world. <laughs> you, you shot a pilot for ABC. Yeah. Right? It's called uh, 626 Park Avenue. Yeah. Uh, what's the status? I don't know. We'll find out in a couple of weeks whether we get picked up, but uh, it's an hour of drama. Uh, Terry O'Quinn plays my husband, who's from Lost, and um, it's kind of creepy. So uh, oh, okay. it's, it's written by uh, Dave Wilcox, who did uh, Fringe, so it's definitely got a, more of a sci-fi kind of feel. Okay. So it'll be different, but fun, if it gets picked up. <laughs> yeah, thank you. What is it? I don't know, I have that for the kids, you know? It's, it's on them now. And, you know, mom, I guess you're going to have to have a Well, it wasn't your mom, I have plans. <laughs> so we're doing a little uh, compilation of people um, and special moments of the with the mothers or how to get into life and so we're calling it like, how did your mom deliver for you? My mom, I work at there, she don't know what happened. So how did your mom deliver for you? My mom gave me uh, great keys in life. She told me that I would always have to be better than everybody else for to be considered equal. And that was important growing up in, as an African American in a white environment. I always had to overachieve just to be noticed. And that's an unfortunate truth for a lot of us uh, who are minorities in uh, a world where we are minorities. But that's kind of something that I've had to live by and a lot of people have to live by. And that's really Broadway again. Oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, it's been two years uh, since I, the last thing I did was have a roundabout for Sondheim and Sondheim. Absolutely. Uh, I, I can't wait to get back. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you very much, though. Hi. Hi. You're so beautiful. Thank you. I just want to know, what's the worst pickup line that you've ever had given to you by a guy? Ooh. Well, I, I'm not out a lot. Um, <laughs> boy. I haven't gotten... I got a different one. It's stuff. Guys, do they still use those? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, not you. Oh, they do. Oh, okay. Let's, let's hear it. Who, who's, uh, who's got the worst pickup line? Any offers? Yeah, now it's cricket. We'll come back to that one. We'll come back to that one. You might use one as I told her. Yeah, right. Well, I got one more for you. Where is this? Growing up, um, was there something that your mom made you do that you really hated that now that you're a mom yourself really makes sense? <laughs> well, well I, I hated doing chores on Saturday and I have to do the bathrooms. I do the toilets. I hated it. Uh, does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and luckily I don't have to do that. <laughs> but I do enjoy ironing and I do enjoy vacuuming the toilets. You have um, yeah. boys and girls, correct? I have three girls and one boy. Wow, three girls and one boy. Okay, so good, because I have a little girl. Yes, yeah. So, uh, any advice for personal father? 
Well, the, the, the biggest advice, having three who have all, yes. my oldest right. is 24, my middle is 22, and, and Sasha, my youngest girl, is 11. My son has been with threes and he's 19. But for girls, because of their hormones and them going through all those kind of changes, you can't take things personally. Especially when they're like sixth, seventh grade, you're going to lose them. You're going to lose them to their friends. They're going to act, they're, they're not going to act like themselves. You eventually will get them back, probably after 18, 19, because they're, they really can't help their hormones and their. It's a, it's a hard Even time. Dad or dads dad are dad. always better. Dads, dads, dads are always better. But, but don't, if they react, okay. don't, don't, don't take it personally. Oh, know that you'll get them back eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Very good advice. All right. Before we let you go, here's what it'll be the plan to ask. Okay. So I'm going to say that as your finale, don't be out for it. Here's this Sunday on ABC. You feel my thing. And here's your seat. Guys, everybody's looking this way. No applause. Yeah, yeah. No applause. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. No the finale of Desperate Housewives airs this Sunday on ABC. And here's your sneak peek at them. Ooh, that was sultry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going tonight? Yeah. Of course. I'll see you later. We're going to put some down and pour some more time just for how it's going to be. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, applaud it until uh, we say goodbye. Right, yes, I will. I will. Ready? <laughs> Vanessa, so great to see you. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Oh, good.